Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Lion. Plays of Binding of Isaac. Afterbirth? I've like, I've split up Afterbirth and Antibirth. J1BR! GY1G. So like, oh, where did you come from? Uh, my best friend, aka Punching Bag. I was gonna say one of these days I'll get those names right, but I don't think that's the case. And now I'm having horrible flashbacks because I realized like two episodes ago in one of the series, I was like, hey, it's the, uh, it's the enemy that could give us nine lives, but it was not the enemy that could give us nine lives. This is the enemy that can give us nine lives. But yeah, I've split up uh, Afterbirth and Antibirth to the point where like, Afterbirth gets me on Wednesdays and Fridays, and Antibirth gets me on Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. So. Uh, is that a fair distribution? I think it is, given that we're recording more anti-birth content right now, but what I'm trying to get at is I think that I'll probably be surprisingly fairly... Why not? If we're getting close to the end of anti or of Afterbirth here, we might as well um, experience some of the trinkets I never take. Um, and we'll check our item room, and Judas' shadow is very interesting, although with nine lives it's actually horrible. Um... I, I should be surprisingly well equipped to deal with Afterbirth because it's not like I'm swapping between these back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So what's the deal with Afterbirth? Um, you can be much more aggressive on Devil Deals and transformations exist. So, well, more transformations exist. So experimental treatment is actually probably worth taking, although to some extent the jury may still be out. I may make a little bit of a bold action here. And, uh, by the way, if you're going to be in the comments saying... You shouldn't have taken nine lives until you went to your item room and saw if there's Judas's shadow in there. With you live a risk-averse lifestyle to the degree of Ben Stiller in the 2004 classic film R.I.P. Philip Seymour Hoffman, known as Along Came Polly. That's ridiculous. Your amount of risk aversion. Live. Oh, I don't want to order a, a ribeye steak. Maybe they'll tell me a super ribeye is on special in ten minutes. I'm just gonna wait until you know the heat death of the universe to order my food. I have a rule for, if I'm like at a restaurant, and I can't figure out what I'm going to order, no amount of, t I feel like if you look at a menu, you get two minutes. And if you don't know what you want at the end of two minutes, you're just bad at ordering. And I don't mean that to be offensive, I mean that, you know, the first step of growth is admitting you have a problem. You, at that point, you just call the server over, and then whatever you want in that moment, whatever you want to order, that's what you order. You, we're all human beings. We've ordered meals before in the past. You don't need 10 minutes to decide what you want. Oh, but I really, I had pork four days ago, but I, you know, I really should have fish for the omega-3s, but, you know, I feel like I should have a hamburger. It's been a long time. I haven't had a hamburger since April 11th, you know. At that point, you just call the server over, and, you know, they take whoever's ready to order first, and then you're on the hot seat, motherfucker. I'll have the shepherd's pie. There you go. You got what you wanted. Try it out. What was this related to? I don't know. I've lost, <laughs> I've lost track of it. Either way, um, I think that we may try something ballsy and uh, kill ourselves nine times to come back as Dark Judas right away. But only, I mean, I'd prefer to do it if we had HP available, which obviously we're not going to. So maybe I'll just wait till the next floor and we'll uh, we'll see if we can kill ourselves productively on like a deal with the devil and, and see how that works out. And maybe that'll change things. I uh, should not have taken those. Very short-sighted. Even as I was taking one, I was like, probably shouldn't take the other one, but still did it. Um, just because we could get those black hearts as Dark Judas. And sure, it would cost us a heart to get in there, but assuming we had the heart, we'd leave with more than that. So, ooh, I really thought that I could get out of the way there. Um, anyway, try it out for yourself. I'm not uh, always a decisive person. But there have been times, you know, you go to a restaurant, you look at it, you're like, I got four different things that I would want here. Just call the server over, let God decide. I don't know the name of this dish, I just know the sound it makes when it's, uh, veal piccata fricassi. I don't think I've ever ordered at an Italian restaurant, so that was pretty much just off the, off the cuff there. Because whenever I order at a restaurant that, you know, is not strictly written in the, the plainest of English, I, I just pointed it and go, I'll have the blank. And the blank is the kind of meat that it is. Because it makes you feel fancy. You know, it's, you go to McDonald's, you don't say, give me ten chicken McNuggets. Give me ten fried chicken slurry pieces. 
And yeah, give me a, a ketchup and sugar-based barbecue sauce to go along with that as well, as if that wasn't enough. I just walk up and, uh, I say, excuse me, I'll have the venti chicken, please. Oh, yes, with a, a side of hot mustard, please. Uh, A.K.A. Mutard Picante. And they say, get out of the store. Didn't you get the restraining order in the mail? And I say, joke's on you, motherfucker. I don't have a mailbox. I'm off the grid. Okay. It's Monstro. I really am committing more or less to the Dark Judas shit show here. So, I would like if possible... I, don't, I mean, I don't care about these spirit hearts is what I'm trying to get at. Um, the spirit hearts we're losing, that is. We'll come in here. We'll take pretty much whatever's on offer. And this is like an easy choice because... Guppy's Collared gets us closer to becoming Guppy as well. I think we'll take Necronomicon. I think it's bad. But I also think that, uh... Like... So is the other item that we... Kill this one. So is the other item that we had in there. Um, you know, Tear Detonator. So, it's gonna take a little while. But to respawn as Dark Judas and to have money uh, to buy maybe more Spirit Hearts. And, you know, we, we don't have any proper HP, but still. Dude, are you really gonna do me dirty with this, like... Curse of the Maze here. I'd really just like the fire room to be as close as possible. I'm gonna just be, you know, on the level with you. It's probably not gonna be the most exciting first couple of minutes of a, a rebirth or an anti-birth episode. And by anti-birth and rebirth, I mean, of course, afterbirth. Could you? I, I get it, okay? You got a naming convention. You know, Star Wars has a naming convention. Star Wars Episode X... You know, A New Hope, Star Wars Episode X, Empire Strikes Back. They aren't called, you know, Star Wars 1, The War of the Stars, Star Wars 2, Celestial Wars of the Star Forge. You know, like, we're getting into the point where there's just too many births. Okay, we're, we're good now. You got Anti-Birth, Rebirth, Afterbirth, Afterbirth Plus, like, just come on. It's, we're getting into some Square Enix, like, Final Fantasy X2 nonsense here. Well, it, like, a lot of this is really good. But I think you just crack into that. You gotta take Sackhead. It's it's a game winner. I would like Car Battery as well. Emperor, question mark card. Uh, Emperor is better because question mark card does nothing for us right now. I'm thinking now, we're, we're surprisingly, like, not behind schedule. Which is, like, ancillary to our goals, but not necessarily a bad thing. And um, we're gonna be doing a lot more damage now. So crack these guys and... I really thought we could navigate the myriad labyrinthine super envies there, but uh, no such luck. What do you got for me? Shoop to boop. Yeah, easy choice. And I think that, you know, Purple Heart is okay. Endless Nameless tends to be more enjoyable just because you can get, like, infinite consumables off of it. We won't get infinite consumables, but... I guess we kind of look cute in our little tuxedo sack boy here. I'll be your tuxedo sack boy. Sack boy for money. Do what you want me to do. Because of the fact that we have a... Uh... Wait, 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 wait. Just give me a second here. Because of the fact that we have uh, Endless Nameless, I kind of feel like we should be teleporting on the regular. But honestly, okay, I'm not going to do it on this room, but only because we already beat the first wave. And the other thing is, like, a teleport card that could possibly... Hey, let me just back up a little bit here. Um, if you're not familiar with Endless Nameless, our, our trinket, um, it gives you a certain percentage chance, I'm not sure if it's weighted by luck, um, but a certain percentage chance that when you use a consumable, uh, uh, an exact duplicate of that consumable will just fall onto the ground in front of your feet. So, if you use the Emperor card, an Emperor card could just spawn in front of you, They're therefore giving you a really good chance, or at least a decent chance to get a lot of value out of uh, cards, pills, etc, etc. The problem is that, uh, first off, it didn't work right there, but the, the problem is that a, uh, a teleport card doesn't really fit the bill for us, because we're going to teleport away from the consumable drop and then have to backtrack for it, which doesn't necessarily cost us a lot, but it costs us some of our uh, utility there. I gotta say, it's, it's a nice change of pace to be back into Afterbirth. I recorded like six Anti-Birth episodes yesterday, and it was good. I, I had some amazing runs. Some extremely overpowered runs, and some runs that were probably underpowered, but a lot of fun because of all the new mechanics that I was dealing with, and, you know, unlocks that I was getting, and etc, etc, but... I didn't hear a consumable drop there. I've also got to go because I got me a drop top, and if I hit the switch, I can make the ass drop. But, uh, 
it's it's nice. It's it's like wearing dress shoes, you know, that you just bought for a fancy event or something like that. And they're nice, you know. You you look dapper, but they're stiff, and you know they don't c contour to your feet appropriately. And you know you were under the clock, so you don't you didn't really choose the ones that were perfect. You just chose. You're like, okay, those are like within my price range, and they look fine. Let's just get out of here and go to the KFC for lunch. Afterbirth is more like these are my like. Converse that I've owned since like 1998 sure maybe they got some holes in them Maybe they smell a little bit other people look at them and go you know oh, why are you still wearing those the old Chuck Taylors are better But they just fit me okay They just fit me and they they know what I like they hug me in all the right places I'm gonna try to get out of the habit of being very abusive to our donation machine uh, in in anti-birth we've just been like absolutely destroying it and it's good that they have, you know, different save files, or like the donation machines have different, uh... They keep different records. In the mod and in the the actual version of the game, which I, I think is good, but... At the same time... Bad habits, man. So we got a big fan, uh, in case that was not obvious. Uh, it's sort of tempting to consider going for the pony here. The pony's underrated, but... We pro we're one guppy item away from getting a passive ability to fly. And Shoop the Whoop is probably worth keeping. Yeah, I think we just go. Stay on pace, and sure, we miss out on blue map as a result of this, but... Secret rooms are not absurdly valuable in, uh... In Afterbirth. Uh, okay, we are now guppy, so I'm glad I didn't take the pony. And honestly, I'm out of this room. I'm gonna do the rest of the floor, obviously, but... You know, I I'm out of this room. And we're gonna be... Just absolutely steamrolling now. Magic Mushroom plus Guppy all on the same floor. And this is where you go. Okay, well, this is a little easier than maybe even I would have liked. But that's cool. You know, we've had some good tangents to start this episode off. And we played our we played our hand right here. And certainly, if nothing else, I feel happy that uh, I was sensible enough to actually commit to that Dark Judas play. And there was a time there where I thought that, you know, it's not worth it. I'd rather have the... Um, I'd rather have the defense than have the damage from Dark Judas. And we, to be honest with you, just like the old shoes are a little stinky, but reliable, we probably reliably would have won with 10 lives instead of the Dark Judas damage bonus anyway. But um, this way, a little bit more interesting, I think, and a lot more high damage without a doubt. So uh, we'll hold this moon card. We're getting close enough to the boss rush to foresee using it there. That's just, we're getting a little ridiculous. Lazarus Rags I don't think is very important at this point. And neither is, like, in all likelihood, anything else on this floor. So let's get out of here. And we will take there's options. And I think I'll donate until we get down to... Alright, I'll we'll donate until that exact moment right there. That was of my own volition that I wanted to stop there. That was not the game telling me to stop. You can't handle the truth. A few good men. Jack Nicholson. Tom Cruise. That's my new character. Is the guy who just relates everything back to... A few good men. Uh, I've never seen a few good men. Which I think makes the character that much better. Keep the moon card. Uh, well, we can hug a lot like right outside, right? Maybe we'll get a... We got a secret room out of it, which is funny, but... Or did we get a secret room out of it? We didn't. I thought I heard it go like do 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 do. Maybe that's just the music, and I'm hearing it for the first time. Uh, Morpheus, why do my ears hurt? Because you're using them for the first time. That was the initial cut, where Screech from Saved by the Bell was playing Morpheus. You laugh, but it's not necessarily that ridiculous. I mean, he's got kind of the same physique as Keanu Reeves. The same design, I mean, less acting chops, admittedly, but Keanu Reeves before The Matrix, and even to some extent after The Matrix, was kind of a joke actor. And I don't mean that to be rude. I mean, again, half Canadian Idol. I mean, not the show Canadian Idol. We, we've talked about that. Ryan Malcolm, etc., etc. But um, that's, a, that's a pretty niche joke, to be fair. Either way, um, when I was growing up, you know, Keanu Reeves was the actor that was probably, he was like the Matthew McConaughey of his day. You know, and right now everyone's going, all right, all right, all right. Back then, everyone was going, whoa, I know kung fu, you know? And then, 
is the Matrix movies to some extent, but then also John Wick. Keanu Reeves is like well respected now, and I deservedly so. Also, the fact that he hasn't stopped aging, or sorry, hasn't started aging, probably is helping out for him as well. But you know, he gets the job done, I suppose. And it's the same thing's happening with Matthew McConaughey for a long time. It was like, hey, buddy, pot smoking bongo player, dude. But now it's like, you know, True Detective season one was awesome. And, you know, we had a bit part in The Wolf of Wall Street. He's like, he's coming up in respectability. Mud, he did with Dallas Buyers Club. He was in that, right? He was probably in that. Is it, It's a, you know, mid-career renaissance. Tropic Thunder is hilarious. Anyway, I'm getting at it. I got nothing against Matthew McConaughey. Wouldn't want to be his neighbor, but I got nothing against Matthew McConaughey. Because, like... If you're at home and it's like 1 a.m. and you got to go to the office in the morning, I'm, I'm assuming like if you live near Matthew McConaughey, you're probably doing pretty well for yourself, right? Or you're like, shit, I got to get up at 6 a.m. You know, Tom Cruise is coming in and I got to get his accounts in order or the IRS is going to butt fuck him. And then, um, well, we should go look for the, the shop here. You know, you hear, dun, 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 and you're like, oh, McConaughey's on the bongos again. At least for the average person, you'd go over to your neighbor's house and, you know, they'd be like, they'd have their shirt off, but they'd be like imperfect human beings. And you'd be like, hey, you know, I feel bad asking you to be quiet, but, you know, your life's not in order. You should really, like, go get a job and, like, start working out and eating less carbs because you look a little puffy and you're playing the bongos and, you know, siphoning production out of the national economy, right? I've got stuff to do here today. But then imagine you're that neighbor, you go over to Matthew McConaughey's house, and he's like a buff, shirtless, like, 31-year-old millionaire. And I imagine he'd be like really cool about it, too. He'd be like, I didn't realize I was making so much noise with my bongos. I'm sorry, buddy. Jesus Juice here? It's like, at that point, you would have to evaluate like every decision in your life. That led you to be so close to that perfect lifestyle and yet not quite attain it. And we'll stick with Shoop It doesn't look it doesn't matter. We're gonna win. We're gonna win this one. It's uh, like it becomes a super like Frank Grimes in that you know landmark episode of The Simpsons sort of one where like he's Frank Grimes does everything right at the nuclear power plant, everybody else there is an idiot, and then they get promoted over him and respected. Um, and, and well liked, despite the fact that, you know, they're, they're idiots. And that's not me being rude to the Simpsons, I mean, they're, they're lovable idiots. At least, you know, the people that work at the nuclear plant are, are, are dumb in that television show. It, you know, intentionally so. I see the, uh, I see the Tinted Rock. It'll be a, a quest to see if I remember it. Toxic Shock's probably our best option here. Uh, I, I don't think, eh, fuck it, let's take some pills. Why not? Again, with, with Endless Nameless, you're probably incentivized to take pills because, you know, you can, we just got four speed upgrades instead of one. That might be a little overkill, but anyway, that's, you know, if I live next to Matthew McConaughey, I wouldn't be jealous. I would be a little bit jealous. I'm just going to, you know, you can say you wouldn't be jealous and that's fine. Maybe it's even true. I doubt it. But I'd be a little bit jealous. You'd be like, this dude's living like the dream. At least he's living his dream. He doesn't have to be living your dream for you to be jealous of him. Since we're already guppy, I think we just take Rodden Baby. Not to mention he's a well-respected actor, at least nowadays. Who's the actor that gets made fun of nowadays? For a while it was like Channing Tatum, I thought, and then, you know, in the Jump Street films and, uh... The end is... This is the end? He started to get like a... Would we get Fun Guy? No, not quite. You got a little bit more, you know, well-liked as well. Basically, like, if you're a handsome actor who's ever been in a bad movie, fuck you. I guess is the, uh, is what I'm getting at here. Will Ferrell? Adam Sandler? No, come on. Don't be ridiculous. Oh, we've been to the item room. We should go to the shop. I mean, we have 61 cents. In fact, we should go to the boss trap room as well. Or at least, you know, we can teleport out if we don't want to fight it. But fighting in it is going to take like 10 seconds. I've decided to go for it. I mean, at this point, like, I don't really want to rush this run, but I really feel like 
we should pretty much just start cranking out, uh, like, Emperor cards as often as possible, and just win, because it, it's just artifice at this point. Like, we, we will win this run. I'm leaving the nickel behind, because it's irrelevant again. Um, I gotta start thinking, actually. Like, today is Wednesday, December 28th. I gotta... Oh, he predicted me! He predicted me! I gotta start thinking of when the, uh... The last Afterbirth episode is going to be and what we're going to do for it. I mean, I don't think I'm going to do anything particularly special. It's like a little... It was less noteworthy of a release than, than Rebirth. And Afterbirth Plus is coming, which is probably just going to be like more of... It, it's going to be like a, an improvement, presumably. And it's going to be a nice size expansion, but it might even be smaller than Afterbirth in terms of like the actual curated content. Um, so, I, I mean, I guess I could just continue... And not really draw too much attention to it. Not, like, not everything needs to be a, a YouTube... I mean, I'm throwing a little shade at not my colleagues necessarily, but other people on YouTube where it's like, you know, we hit 100,001 subscribers. Thank you so much. And it's like a teary thumbnail and the, the title is like, you won't believe my reaction. Oh my God. And then like the next day, we hit... 101,030 subscribers, thank you. When I was a child, I never dreamed that this would... Like, I'm just not that sentimental. And I, I refrain from, like, throwing shade at people. Because, like, when it comes to clickbait, I understand. That's just a... People are, like... Sometimes I get a appreciation threads on my own subreddit, which is, like, a little cheap because, you know, everyone there is already probably a little predisposed to like me, except for one or two of you who know who you are. But, um... People go like, wow, let's show some appreciation for NL, like he doesn't do clickbait. And the reason is, I mean, first off, I, I just roll my eyes when I see like, you know, clickbait in general. You know, like like putting an entire title in all caps. I'll put the game name in all caps. Put the entire title in all caps. That's where I draw the completely arbitrary line. Or like using three question marks instead of, or three exclamation marks instead of one. I, my old, like... English teaching self just can't do it. I can't compromise my values that much. But the reason it's done is because it works. You and I are more likely to click on it as a result of that. And I think it's only like there's a there's a subtle but important difference in my mind between clickbait and good advertising. I think something is clickbait if the content of the video actually is betrayed by the title. So for example, those awful advertisements on the internet that are like you know, people are stunned with her departure. Gone too soon. And then it's like a picture of Melissa McCarthy. And you're like, I don't think she died. And you click on the ad and they're like talking about her leaving Mike and Molly. That is, like, they lied to you to get you to... Ooh. They lied to you to get you to open that. And that does happen on YouTube. People are like, you won't believe what happened. And then, like, it's an extremely believable story. Now, this is a tough choice. I think... I'm probably going to get a deal with the devil anyway, so give me Torn Photo. Just I, I, I like the high rate of fire. Especially, it amplifies tear effects. Um, there are videos like that, but if a video is just like... You know, if, if it's got a thumbnail of somebody like shouting, and they look like they're engaged, I don't think that's clickbait. I think that's just good advertising. And the truth of the matter is, the reason I don't do like a unique thumbnail for every single episode is twofold, depending on your perspective. Either I'm, I'm lazy or I produce too much content. For me to, like, start working up four to seven unique thumbnails a day gets to the point where it, it really cuts into your time, which is why I use the templates. And, you know, I, I don't really deserve... Uh, I don't deserve derision for it, but I don't deserve necessarily, like, a higher degree of respect either. And the other thing is, like, I, I refuse... First off, y'all... And it, when I say y'all, I don't mean y'all. I mean a very specific few of you need to understand when to do, it's it's the boy who cried clickbait we did like a, an overwatch see a series of overwatch games with the tournament of shame crew we called it tournament of shame crew plays overwatch and then i got accused of it being clickbait because they're like this isn't a tournament of shame it's got the tournament of shame plays distinction it's like you know eating the starburst mini and being like this isn't a starburst not a starburst mini dude it's got the same theme, but it's a variation on it. And so, I, you gotta accept that, uh, you know, people will be more 
open to the click like anytime a news headline is like wow you won't believe your eyes that's clickbait i understand that but anytime somebody made like gussy gus is a title up or something like that you just got to be like okay that's just doing business you got to respect this is the bottom line for for people on youtube as well you know and it's it's not necessarily amoral or unethical i think to do it unless you do it in such a way that it's cheesy as hell like you you buy like a fucking 4k drone and you you post a thumbnail that's like my dreams have come true that's lame and silly but you know i don't know there's there's things on youtube i don't understand people like you know the youtubers will buy like a million dollar house and then do a tour of it i don't glamorize that lifestyle you know i i like the I'll, I'll do an unboxing of a $7.50 Subway sandwich. And I'll be like, thanks to you guys, I don't have to get the cold cut combo if I don't want to. But most of the time, I still do. But we can get the, you know, we can get the Italian BMT if we please. That video would probably do pretty well. I don't know if the fine folks at Doctors Associates would sue me over it, though. I don't know, probably not. They seem like good folks. <laughs> Yeah, the subway organization hasn't hasn't had any bad PR lately, right? I'm not just completely tone deaf. But yeah, I mean, I think deep down we all resent clickbait because it gets us. Even I, I am like immune to clickbait 99.9% .9 of the time. But and I'm informed. Like, I'm, this isn't like, you know, someone who's ignorant of the internet being like, oh my god, is Melissa McCarthy dead? It's more like. You know, I understand. I look at the link and I go, this link is an ad, but I gotta know what the I gotta know what the what the sell on this ad is. I gotta figure out where they're coming from here. It still gets me from time to time. You won't believe what this celebrity looks like now. They look like a slightly older version themselves. That's why we hate clickbait, is cause it works, man. But as soon as the New York Times starts doing it, we gotta we gotta cut that shit out. I was so expecting that to work like rocket bombs. That probably will not make sense unless some anti-birth episodes have gone up that you might not have seen yet. Either way, sneaking in here. Easy plays. We wait. Our our res is Lazarus Rag, so it's not very good. We've like already exhausted every other resurrection in the game. Is Burkano, unfortunately. Curse of the Lost, not very good, but not necessarily bad. Rosary and Leech, and I guess Key Bomb. We have so many keys, it does not matter to us. Spun? It's our second virus, but I guess we're not at Spun yet. It, it does count, if I remember correctly. Anyway, but that's like, you know... It's the other thing, is you gotta... Understand, you uh, as a YouTuber... And it, keep in mind, like, I know a lot of people are probably disagreeing with me on this. Um, but as a YouTuber... You know, you put the time into recording the videos. People who are better people than myself put time into editing them. Sometimes scripting, lighting, costuming, you know, etc, etc. And then, you know, they publish it as like, my best day ever. And then people go, wow, clickbait, dislike, you know? Like, they just want to ensure that the content that they worked on gets viewed as much as possible. And to some extent, to, to do what I do with a naming convention, is just like the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth, Episode 587. You know, that's not gonna... That's not selling too many tickets. Unless you're you're still here at this point. You're a captive audience who wants to hear my new parody of a Beatles song, you know? Bang, bang, Mathis. Clickbait titles go down on his head. Do, do, do. And, you know, and Mathis, out of everyone in the crew, except maybe Dan, catches the most flack for this. And, you know, I'll tell him the same thing I'm telling you. You work hard on the content. As long as you're not lying to people... With the, with the thumbnail, I don't think it matters. Like, what does it affect the viewing experience if, you know, the thumbnail is math is looking super excited versus it's, you know, something that Dracula Fetus drew with a number attached to it, you know? It's all, it's all arbitrary. There was a time on YouTube where it was like, if you use thumbnails that aren't auto-created, that's clickbait. Dude, look at this guy, he's putting effort into his thumbnails. Just, YouTube just picks one for you, just let it do that, you know? Times change. Either way, this has been a good episode for, for random talk. And a good episode for, like, the easiest win in either version of Isaac in recent memory. Like, we got Guppy absurdly quickly, really high damage. Judas the Shadow helped with that. 
magic mush didn't hurt. And we're pretty much just gonna win this fight on the back of that, you know, tarot card plus shoop the whoop right now. Alright, well thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. New episodes come out every single day, for now at least, until January 3rd, when Afterbirth Plus comes out at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, at which point we will probably produce a lot more that will come out at various times throughout the day. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.